Hello friends, welcome to Washington, D.C. I'm here in front of the National Museum of Natural History. I've been wanting to check this place out for a long time. I'm glad you're here. Let's go. This African bush elephant is the largest stuffed real animal on the planet. Shot by a big game hunter in 1955. Amazing. I'm in trouble already. It's a little late in the day. I don't think I'm gonna be able to see this whole museum in the amount of time that they have given me. It's like three o'clock, they close at 5.30. Two and a half hours just doesn't seem like enough. I haven't even made it out of the lobby yet, but I'm looking around here at all of the sections of the museum. There's Ocean Hall, Human Origins, uh, you have the Fossil Hall over on this side, and there's gems and geology up atop. I love rocks and gems and minerals and all that stuff. I love dinosaurs. I like all the stuff. I can't wait to see all this. Let's go. Let's start in the Fossil Hall. Huge. I love all these fossils. Turtle. Big one. And whatever that is, it's not small either. Giant is right. Man, oh man. This dude is huge. I'm not sure because it doesn't say any description down here, but it looks like one of those actual flying mechanical birds. I noticed down here that this bird looks like the Tim Bird, that toy from the 80s and 90s. You remember that toy, Tim Bird? I loved the Tim Bird. I had what, four or five of those things. They were cool. You just wind up this rubber band and they take off a flying, fly right around. You can catch them. It's fun. Why they don't make them here? Maybe they do make them. I have to look them up. Okay. I just looked up and saw the end of a tail that was attached to this giant dinosaur. It's the giant seropod dinosaur. So far, this is my favorite display in the whole place. It really, really is tearing them up. These are the ones I would be afraid of. These smaller ones that look like they're running pretty fast at you. You, you can probably hide as well as you could from one of these big ones. Unlike Dinosaur World in Florida, these dinosaurs are real. Although Dinosaur World in Florida is awesome. It's awesome. There's three locations of Dinosaur World. There's one in Arizona, I believe, and uh, another one in somewhere else that I've been to. I can't even remember. But these are really interesting to see the actual skeletons of these old-time critters that used to crawl around the earth. It's like one big bone. It's a heavy-headed animal. <laughs> this is an interesting scene. I've never seen an animal like this. This is a giant deer. I have a couple of friends that would love to have seen this thing alive. I'd like to see it alive. Probably not this close. I just turned my head and I was looking straight into the face of this ostrich. This dude's feet are like three times the size of its head. Did you know that it is unknown what the actual colors of any dinosaur is? We don't know what that is. If you see a dinosaur and it's colored any certain way, no one knows what that color is. It's just made up. Time to go to the next section. Which one shall we go to? How about live butterflies and plants? So the second one. Butterfly Garden is closed. Oh, this is as close as we're going to get, my friends. I just got completely engulfed by a family back there. Like, pushed their shoulders right up to my legs and blocked me in. It was crazy. This, th there's a lot of people in here. Mm -hmm. 
Insect zoo. Yeah. I've been to an insect zoo. There's a lady that saw me filming and she said, make sure to mention that it's sponsored by Orkin here. <laughs> Pretty ironic, isn't it, that the insect zoo is sponsored by a pest killer? Uh, funny. Kind of. It's a cool exhibit about mangroves and how they work to keep erosion away. They're not here, they say, but they are there. They're, they're, they're camouflaged, though. I am looking around. I don't. I think that's one right there. So he is there, definitely. Or she. I don't know how to tell the sex of an insect. This is called a moon crab. I don't think I've seen a cooler critter yet. Look at that. Class insecta. Wow. We're gonna cut our time pretty short here in the insect part because there's just strollers of abundant here. I'm getting run over. Let me get out of here. Just as I was leaving, I saw this exhibit about mummies. Mummies masks, coffin masks. Now we're into some amphibious creatures. Here's a very interesting one explaining the makings of a crocodile. Snakes. The leatherback turtle. It's huge. There are some aquatic birds and terrestrial birds. Except this one looks a little extra with his giant sternum. <laughs> These look funny to me. Especially this one. I don't know why. <laughs> Lots of bones. Lots of bones. Deer. Oh dear. A barking deer. Didn't even know it existed. And a mouse deer? Have you heard of such a thing? Armadillo. That's what you look like, huh? Where to next? I'd say gems and minerals. Objects of wonder. I heard this exhibit is pretty good. Oh, well, here's the gems and minerals store. We don't want to go here yet. Got a little distracted on my way to gems and minerals. Whoa, that thing is gigantic. Look out. Objects of wonder. Wow. This is Robert Kennicott. He donated his body to the Smithsonian, to science. And here it rests. He had stellar teeth, Robert. Wow. Although it's a little quieter in this part of the museum, I can't say he's resting in peace so much, unless that glass is soundproof. Lapis lazuli is what it's called. A giant chunk of it. 
you may recognize that nothing really flows together. There's different types of objects. You got the lion, you got a rock over here, you got some jewelry. This is objects of wonder, which is things that the Smithsonian has collected through various channels over the years, and they're picking the best of the best. And they explain they get it from illegal seizures and things that the government pulls from. Sometimes people, a lot of times, people donate their collections and various ways that the Smithsonian gets a hold of these objects. But here it is on display. Mm -hmm. Or butterflies, a bunch of butterflies, and other critters down here, beetles. Some very small insects on display here. Please touch. I don't mind if I do. Cool. I like this display of all these rocks, where they came from, all the colors. Just installed tile floors in a couple of bathrooms in Florida. And they looked a lot like that wall over there, believe it or not. Next exhibit, lights out. We're covering our night sky. I like astronomy. Let's see what this is about. Here's a map of some of the darkest places on our planet. Very cool exhibit of night photography. Antarctica, a place I've always wanted to go. Hard to see, but it's an exhibit about nighttime birds and insects. When was the last time you saw the Milky Way? When were you last in a dark enough place where you saw the Milky Way? Have you ever seen the Milky Way? I said in there that 40% of Americans live in such a light washed area that they never will experience what it's like to have night vision. Can you believe it? I can't believe that. 40% of America will never experience night vision. Gemology, gems, minerals, I think that's next. Ancient stardust. Can you see it? Space rocks fell right out of the sky. And that's what causes a shooting star. In case you didn't know. These rocks are amazing. Those last couple of rocks I showed you are nothing compared to this next exhibit. These are all meteorites. These meteorites are billions of years old. These cross sections are unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this before. From very smooth to these cross section geometric shapes that you see in here. Just, I've never seen anything like it. Size of Washington, D.C. shot in from the south. Above this exhibit is very interesting. It talks about an asteroid the size of Washington, D.C. that hit the Earth and all the damage it caused and what happened after that. They say that the whole planet was covered in a smoke cloud for an entire year after that thing hit. Wow. The moon. Whole exhibit about the moon. How it began. Moon rock.
I've never seen so many rocks, gems, minerals in my lifetime, ever. It's an incredible collection. It's the Smithsonian. I expected it to be great, but not this great. Never seen so many amazing rocks in my life. This is a very interesting exhibit, the famous American diamonds. First one we have the Freedom Diamond here, the Colorado Crystal, Uncle Sam Diamond, and Arkansas Diamond. The Hope Diamond. Didn't realize that they had that here. Now it's time for the Gems and Minerals Museum Store. This is separate from the museum store itself. There's no like, postcards or trinkety things in here. It's just gems and minerals. Even ones shaped like the National Monument. Okay, I kind of take back what I said a few minutes ago. They do have some trinkety stuff in here. But it all is gems and minerals. I made it to the ground level. There are three levels that you can check out all the exhibits on. This is a totally different experience down here. Note the lack of people. Strollers. None of it. This exhibit is Birds of DC. Northern people. Woodpeckers. All the birds. I knew you'd be here. The American bald eagle. American because well, we're in America. I know bald eagles exist elsewhere. Moai stone picker. Real life. Next is Ocean Hall. Famous Lucy. I've only seen this in the Smithsonian magazines. This exhibit is about different species, human-like species, that inhabited the Earth for the last many, many years. All of these heads are at the correct height for what they would have been like at the time that they were alive. The shorty over there. Homo erectus females were pretty tall. This is some very small people. Now time for the mammals exhibit. 
Big Bear. More deer. This is a fallow deer. Bats. And a white-tailed deer. They really like their deer around here. And now it's time to visit the museum store. You get all your Hope Diamond gear here. Some rocks and gems and things and all your other gift shop items. Smart, smart idea here. They just go for the letters instead of the full names, although I'm not into leopard print. It is a good idea. Definitely going to be getting some postcards Large book section here. Hmm. Mini block sets. It says mini Legos. Really, that is. Never seen that either. And Panamanian molas here. I've never seen that in a gift store. Got my postcards. I was walking out and I saw probably the biggest rock I've ever seen in my life. By rock, I mean gem. I mean, of course, I've seen larger rocks, like mountains of rocks, but wow. Well, I have left at closing time. I did get to see just about everything. I walked pretty quickly through most of those exhibits and to be honest, most of it was meant for families or, or young people to learn. And I learned a lot of stuff in there. I got to see the Hope Diamond. I didn't realize that that was there. It was really neat to see. And lots of other cool facts and things that I saw and experienced today that well, I wasn't really expecting. Thanks for joining me today, friends. I hope you enjoyed this tour around the Natural History Museum here. I appreciate your company. I'll see you in the next video.